afternoon, Juan. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to CheckYourGame.com. And I, I'm excited because I've got a new friend I met uh, through LinkedIn um, this past April. His name is Jim Barber. And I'm excited to have Jim here with us and share, you know, some of the things, a uh, couple questions, you know, with Check Your Game. What's his Check Your Game moment and some of his advice. But before we get into that, I'm going to let it go and let Jim talk about a little bit about his past, what he's doing, some work and family, some different things. But I've got a few questions. But Jim, welcome and go at it. Great. It is good to be with you all. Uh, I'm actually really excited about today. Uh, you know, we all live on in journey and we have these journeys and God has brought me through some amazing times. And so I, uh, I, I went to college. I, I actually have been a career fundraiser. So this is my 38th year in fundraising from very entry level kind of things and just progressing through this time. And, and it's really uh, about probably 20 years ago, I, I felt like God was calling me to ministry and I, I, I did a fast for 30 days just saying, God, where does that look like? And at the end of the 30 days, he said, you are in ministry. You don't have to be in a church. You are in a ministry just by the way and where you work. And so it, that was one of those turning points for me going, okay, I don't have to be in church to be in ministry. I have to, this is, this is where I am. I was married to the most incredible lady for 30 years. Uh, we raised two, uh, I would say she raised two <laughs> incredible boys uh, that uh, first loved God to have married incredible spouses. And I have my first granddaughter, which is pretty cool too. Um, and she instilled in them, um, my wife spent every morning even before our kids in a prayer chair. Mm -hmm. So she spent her morning in a prayer chair, reading the word of God and praying for, for me, which I needed <laughs> and my future of our kids, her sisters, anybody who prompted that. She also would make notes in her Bible saying, pray for this day and the next day or whenever it was answered, answered this time. Mm -hmm. She had a, uh, such an impact in our whole family. Her heart was to give to others. So I, I have to just share this part. Right after we'd gotten married, it was cold. I just bought her a brand new coat. We're driving home and there was a homeless lady without a coat. Mm -hmm. And she said, Jim, stop. I got to give him my coat. And I said, no, I just bought you that coat. Oh, that impacted me for the rest of my life because she always had in the back of her car clothes food uh, to be able to hand out to people our kids would see that and our kids i don't know how many times would come home without their shoes and i said i just bought you those shoes <laughs> that that person needed them and who am i to 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 do that they 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 were involved in inner city ministry which then i got involved in inner, inner city ministry of serving the poor and the suffering you know they went to underneath the bridges to give them food and um but i believe that that was at the core of, of just who we were as a family god provided me a, an incredible job an incredible career which is amazing but because of that, we were able to do some other things for it. So I had this job to be able to do ministry out, out there. So then uh, when my wife turned 49, she came home and said, ah, I have stage four metastatic breast cancer. And we went to meet with the doctor and he gave us basically two years. He said, I think we can go two years. That was my check my game moment. Uh, that was my crisis of faith. Yeah. My wife, uh, at some point, uh, there's this picture of us holding Trudy up. I said, we boys are going to help carry you through this treaty, and we're going to believe in healing for you. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to just believe that. And, uh, 
But a few months later, I began really running and I ran my first marathon during that time. Mm-hmm. That was my, my way to get out on the road and stream at God mm-hmm. and to pray and to listen to praise music and, and, and begin to focus on that. One night we were going to bed and she said, Jim, if this doesn't go well, please tell me you won't walk away from Jesus. And I said to her at that time, I can't guarantee that right now. So we went through the journey uh, uh, together as a family. And she was on chemo treatment. So I ran my first marathon in Oklahoma City. And if you know the background of the Oklahoma City, it's, it's, in, it's the memorial. Uh, and uh, I ran that. And she was on chemotherapy, had her wig on. It was raining. It was miserable. But at six different spots, she somehow had the strength to go. And I would see her with her umbrella going, you can do this, Jim. At mile 17, she said, uh, I said, man, I am dying. She said, Jim, you've proven it. You can do it. I said, you're in the battle. I'm going to finish this race. And she was at the end of the race. And that was a time of turning for us uh, in terms of I needed to do that. I needed to do that for her. I needed to do it for me. And that was a point of, okay, I can do this. Uh, After 16 years with the organization, my position was eliminated. And we had to move away from that area, away from her support system, away from her doctors. And we moved here, I praise God for the opportunity to work at Mercy, Uh, moved here. We knew no one, she knew no one, new doctors. But did I hear her complain once? No, not not one time. In fact, she was meeting with women here, encouraging them in their walk with their faith. No one would know that she was battling cancer like she was and had a pain that she was until the last two months. We were given six years instead of two years. The last two months, she finally said, Jim, I don't wanna see people. I want them to remember me as this. And so we stopped receiving visitors. Uh, About two weeks before, actually it was February 14th, we went and took our family out for a, a, a Valentine's celebration. And I got her back home, we got in bed, got her in bed, propped up, and she said, Jim, I've got to know this today. Will you walk away from Jesus if I don't make it? And I said, I commit to you, I will not walk away from Jesus. Um, She actually passed away 10 days later, and that began, I didn't know how painful that was, It was intense pain, intense sorrow, intense loneliness. Uh, And my kids were also going, Mom, she's the rock. So uh, it was a two-year process of of just trying to find myself. And is God really real? It should have been me, not her, because she is amazing. So I have to just share this real quick story. I, I hope you don't mind because it's, it's so critical. It's so critical to us as we live our life. So uh, like the Thursday, two, Monday before she passed on Thursday, I said, Trudy, I know bills are due this day. I never did bills, you guys. I never did bills. She did them. She's the Proverbs 31 woman. Mm-hmm. She, she did them. She said, oh, Jim, they're over there. They're due Thursday. We can handle that. And then... I said, where are passwords to our systems? I have no idea. Jim, they're in a flowered notebook. That should be easy, right? Yeah. Well, Thursday, praise God, I had couples come from Kansas and really helped me with the bills. And then I began, after I got back from her celebration of life service, uh, she, I needed to get in the system. And the first flowered notebook I found was from like 10 years prior to that. 
And the first page was prayers and scriptures for my husband. Oh. Prayers and scriptures for my kids, mm. for each individual. Wow. And I will tell you, 30 notebooks later, and just a year ago, February, I found the notebook with the, with the passwords in it. And I love the way that God used that and used my wife to continually co encourage me, even though she wasn't here, mm. through these flowered notebooks that wow. she left to share with me. So I, I, I go through this only to say that a couple years ago, I went into church and I went, I had my encounter. And it was a counter of this is, I'm your Jesus, Jim, not your wife's Jesus. Yeah. I need the relationship, not the relationship to your wife. And so I really began looking at men and a men accountability and my accountability. I know the day I made that decision a couple of years ago, my wife's in heaven going, finally, you knucklehead. That's what I was talking to you about. And, and, and since then, I have this passion to do a great work at what I do in fundraising and the work that I do through, through here at Mercy. But also, how do I challenge people to focus on what our relationship first is with God, because that impacts our family, that impacts our work. Yeah. And it's so much more rewarding for me yeah. to have that at the, the root of why I do things I do every day. Yeah. yeah, thank you for sharing that. That These notebooks with the flowers, is it the flowered notebooks? Is that what you call them? Yeah, the flower notebook. I mean, is that just amazing how this written, these written words have so much power in them and just are able to encourage you today and your family and your sons and their wives and kids. Um, that's just amazing that you have all that. And then you said you finally found the one with the passwords, right? You found yeah. that later, right? Yeah. Four years, four years later. Four years later. <laughs> That is, that is crazy. You know, you talk about this time and it's, it's, uh, you talk about this time when you had to look to, um, God, your, yourself and not through your wife. Um, what, what it, it stinks that we have to, a lot of times we get humbled. We have to get humble before we open up our eyes to want to make change for the better. And do you feel that that was, and I hate to say, it's like, yeah things happen in our lives that are humbling that wake us up and you know the tragedy of your wife and but you know at the same time it's allowing you it allowed you to have this relationship with Jesus and to be able to um, uh, witness and witness to others and honor your wife and honor your family through her life and yeah. be able to encourage others um, do you see that I do, I do see that. And in fact, a couple times in our discussion while she was still alive, we talked about the blessing yeah. that this is. I struggled with that just because I'm going just, but I also through this began to understand what God meant through the joy of the Lord. Mm. It's not a feeling. It's just the comfort in the middle of that. And that's really what happened a couple years ago is that in the midst of this, I still, I miss my wife every single moment of every day. Mm. I have unfortunately lost my mom two, month, two, two months ago and it's just waves of, of this. But you know what, I get to sit with my dad and say, dad, guess what? You were married 65 years and you are now alone. This is your new normal, but I'm here to help you. Mm. I, I lost a, one of my best friends of our families last week. And I met with his wife after the funeral and I said, you're just about to go into a most incredible journey. Mm. Call me. Oh. I had a, so at my wife's service, uh, she actually told the pastor what to pray or what to preach. Yeah. And it is about going deeper, surrender completely and finish strong. And so I have a sign and you'll see that on the, on the painting, go deeper, surrender, finish strong. Yeah. And I'm reminded of that every day. And my niece works in a Chick-fil-A in, 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 in uh, Kansas. Okay. And one of their coworkers has 
left, but his heart was to help people uh, with addictions because he came out of addictions. And she just sent me this picture yesterday. It's the coolest thing. She gave him one of the signs, go deeper, surrender, and finish strong. Wow. He has that in his apartment in Kansas City now. And I just love that we can leave, each of us can leave a legacy that is much greater than financial, that is much greater than we can even impact, even imagine through the, through the eyes of God. And he, so my deal is, my joy comes that my wife was so dedicated to that. She taught me, she taught my boys. She had about 700 people at her service, wow. all of which people came and said, you know what? And, and so the pastor got the book and opened it up and there was a, a person that was there, the family was there. And there was a note praying for her daughter, their daughter. And so he went to the couple and said, I want you to see who Trudy was praying for at this time, who's your daughter. <laughs> We have so much opportunity, Gary, to impact through our words, through our actions, every single moment of every single day. Yeah. So we can go deeper, we can surrender, and we can finish strong. And I, I don't mean this to be boastful. So take this in. I have gone through the Word of God four times wow. from Genesis to Revelation. And each time, God just, I, I, it says at the end that you should never take from or add to. And I keep going through saying, well, wait, this was here, here last time. Yeah. And my very favorite, and I'm going to close with this, and you can ask other questions. Okay. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pasture, he restores my soul. Wow. Yeah. Let him, let him be, the, be our shepherd. He wants to be our shepherd. Yeah. That was the first time through. And now I focus in on the last part of that. And surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a promise in the midst of everyday struggle, in the midst of being isolated during this COVID time yeah. to wake up with that promise every morning. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. That's, that's awesome. I mean, thank you for so much for sharing about all that. And, you know, you've given advice. You've given some great stories. And you're honoring your wife and family. She sounds like she was an amazing lady um, uh, with you. And just what she did to teach her kids, giving away her own jacket helping her kids, her boys, your sons to, uh, you know, giving away their brand new shoes. Um, uh, and I understand, you know, going underneath bridges. I get that because, you know, when it's raining, like I'm here in Florida and it's raining, where's their covering? Bridges right. are, the, are the spot, right? right. Um, but she sounds like an amazing lady. And I am just glad that we could honor her um, right now um, through her story and for you sharing and helping to encourage others. And I guess even though you have shared some advice, there's not everybody um, on Check Your Games got a faith story. Everybody talks about something different. And some of the readers, some of the people that are coming to the site, they're not necessarily maybe even going to church or maybe faith isn't a part of their life or maybe it is, maybe there isn't, it isn't. But what advice, um, whether it's somebody who knows a little bit about faith or maybe somebody who doesn't, what kind of advice would you give based off of what you learned, especially for that, those two years after your wife passed and you had this time where you're just like, you're just being challenged in life and things aren't going good. Um, maybe somebody has lost somebody. Maybe they're in a similar situation like that, or maybe somebody uh, maybe it's not just a, a family member they lost. Maybe it's a job. It's a relationship. It's a, a title. It's a house. It's money. I don't know. We lose lots of things. People lose lots of things. But what would you suggest? What kind of advice would you give to somebody who might be on a similar page as you? So for me, it's what is really going to be significant? So for me, we can talk about success 
and success for each of us is different. Success may be financial, success may be position, success may be, uh, look at my family. Uh, but significance goes much, much deeper. So I would just encourage you to, to look at what are those significant things in your life? Because when they become significant, they become the priority. Yeah. And it may take us off our focus of what success looks like in our own eyes, mm -hmm. but what does significance look like? Mm -hmm. And that's what my last half of my life, I hope, is, is moving more towards. I, I just finished a year long, uh, I read the book Halftime, and it's really about the second half of your book. I went through Halftime Institute with some amazing men across the United States. And to begin to, so what is your mission statement? It doesn't matter, again, your faith background or whatever. What is your mission in life? Mm -hmm. And are these things that are around you attributing or distracting you from that mission? Mm -hmm. So I would encourage you just to, what is that mission statement? Have you ever sat down and, and written out your own personal mission statement? Yeah. And then how does that impact us? And how does that impact our decisions, Gary? on what we do next and what we don't. Also, if I would have had that personal mission statement like I do today, back then, I don't know that I would have been as rocked with, oh my gosh, I lost my job, I lost my wife, I lost whatever, if I could just see this. So I hope that helps. That, and I'm not there, Gary, I'm not there. It's a, it's a daily, it's a daily, surrender yeah. it's a daily choice yeah. to finish strong so well thank you for that and you know it now makes sense because when we did your profile picture i asked if you wanted it to be of you or of the painting and it now makes sense that the painting is the profile picture um, because that was what your wife wanted to share at the service and right. so i get it thank you so much jim for sharing with everyone um, your story and a little bit about your background and and advice, which is amazing, and uh, just really appreciate it. And you know, for those who um, uh, you know are interested to uh, to share their story, you know, we welcome we welcome all people. It doesn't you don't have to have a faith story. We just we're just trying to use this platform to encourage others who might be on a similar page who might feel like they're on an island by themselves and they have nowhere to turn. Um, but you know what, there's lots of us who've gone through life with different things and we just wanna give back. And I just, I'm appreciative of you wanting to give back, Jim, um, with your life. And I'm also thankful that, you know what, maybe I'm glad that you kind of didn't do it right because this just adds more power to your story and it just helps others who are in a situation like you had. So. I am thankful, even though it was tough for you to be dealing with this. I am thankful that um, you had to go through that. So any and, last and words, Jim? I just am gra grateful for you, Gary. And I'm grateful for Check Your Game. Because yeah. I remember on LinkedIn going, what is this about? Because it was kind of at that time, and I'm just kind of going, I I'm interested to know more. So we had that conversation. Yeah. And what a blessing. What a, what a blessing. And I think that Check Your Game is – is something that's it's really that kind of going back to that significance yeah. what is that significant thing so i am blessed by you i'm blessed that you're doing this encouraging the, those of us out in linkedin mm -hmm. uh i have found this last uh since march since we've kind of been at home and i will be home until the end of end of december uh working from home is what a opportunity to share and encourage and challenge each other through LinkedIn. So thank you, Gary. Well, thank you. Thanks again. And um, look forward to staying in touch with you. And um, just thanks everybody for listening. And please share comments. If Jim has been encouraging you, share comments on the bottom of his profile page. I know words are so meaningful and I am really gonna be proactive and to get comments because it just it's not just beneficial for Jim, it's beneficial for his family, it's beneficial for others who know him, for people like myself, um, your words matter. So thank you again, and Jim, look forward to staying in touch.